Today's video is gonna be a little bit different than what you're used to, but it's one I think you're really gonna enjoy. I haven't done a dividend portfolio update in quite a while, and today we are gonna look at my top five individual positions. We'll look at some of the top index funds and ETFs as well, but focusing primarily on the top five individual dividend stocks within my dividend portfolio. So if that sounds exciting, do me a huge favor, click that like button down below. It's completely free, but it helps me a ton with the algorithm. And with that being said, let's jump into the video. Hey everyone, Mark Rusin here, back for another video. As always, I'm a CPA and not a financial advisor, so please do not take this as financial advice. And I would like to take a moment to thank today's video sponsor, which is Moomoo. Moomoo has a ton of great tools that are available just at the touch of a few buttons. One of those tools I use regularly is their heat map, which gives you a snapshot at how the market is doing at that particular time. By clicking the markets tab, you can easily locate the heat map at the top. You can use it to track specific sectors or industries, allowing you to identify trends and potential opportunities within those areas. This is not even the best part. The best part right now is they are giving away free stocks. If you sign up for a new account with Moomoo using my link down below and deposit just $100, you will get five free stocks. Now, if you deposit $1,000, you will receive not only 10 more free stocks, but also get a $100 cash reward to use towards investing. As a special bonus just for this channel, when you deposit $5,000, you will get one full share of either Tesla or Google, meaning in totality, you will receive up to 16 free stocks. Make sure you use the link down in the description below. Okay, now back to the video where we're gonna take a look at my top five individual positions within my dividend portfolio. Looking here, this is my dividend portfolio and tracker tool, which can regularly be viewed by premium subscribers to the Dividend Investor's Edge, my weekly newsletter, which is also why things are colored out. The first two positions within my portfolio are foundational positions. The first being an S&P 500 index, accounting for 9% of my portfolio, and the second largest position also being an index fund focusing on dividend growth stocks. So these top two foundational positions account for roughly 15% of my dividend portfolio. Now looking at our first and our top individual position, which is Johnson & Johnson, stock ticker J&J. J&J is a leading pharmaceutical company with a market cap of $439 billion. And the company recently went through a shakeup, spinning off their consumer health segment into a separate public company called Kenview, which will allow the legacy business to focus more on their fast growing segments of pharmaceuticals, which happens to be the largest segment of the business, and then MedTech, which is their medical device segment. Kenview was the largest IPO of the year and the largest since Rivian in 2021. Johnson & Johnson shares are down 11% over the past year as they have been dealing with talc-related litigation that will hopefully be cleared up here in the coming weeks as there have been reports around an $8.9 billion settlement. A settlement would certainly boost shares of Johnson & Johnson as they have recently fallen to my cost basis. Looking here back on the tracker, you can see that I currently own 75 shares of J&J, &J, and that earns me $357 per year in dividend income. Shares of Johnson & Johnson currently yield a dividend of 3%. I do already have a large exposure to Johnson & Johnson, but shares do look intriguing at current levels if you are willing to take the risk exposure with those lawsuits. Analysts are looking for EPS of $10.65 per share this year, which equates to an earnings multiple of 14.7 times. For comparable purposes over the past decade, shares of Johnson & Johnson have traded at an average earnings multiple of 17.2 times, so quite the gap right there. The next two positions in my dividend portfolio are SCHD and then cash. Cash is just uninvested money I have right now. But SCHD, if you have watched any of my prior videos, then you know my love for this dividend ETF. Moving on, the next largest position in my portfolio from an individual stock standpoint is Lockheed Martin, stock ticker LMT. Lockheed Martin is one of the largest US defense contractors. They have popular products such as fighter jets, tanker aircraft, helicopters, and much more. 
Oh, and yes, they even have AI. The hot topic of 2023. When in doubt, include AI somewhere within your business and your stock will certainly rise. Lockheed Martin has a market cap of $115 billion and over the past year, shares are up 3%. But since the end of October 2022, shares have really been trading in that range of 450 to 490, with shares trading at the lower end of that range right now. Lockheed Martin makes up 4.1% of my portfolio currently, and I own 21 shares that pay me $252 in annual dividend income. Lockheed Martin shares yield a dividend of 2.6%, and the dividend has been growing for 20 consecutive years with a five-year dividend growth rate of 8.6%. Analysts are expecting some big growth in 2023 with EPS expected to rise by 25% on the year to $27.03 per share, which calculates out to an earnings multiple of 16.8 times. For comparable purposes, over the past decade, shares of Lockheed Martin have traded at an average of 17.5 times, so you're getting a slight discount compared to their prior history. Moving on to my third largest individual position, which is Bristol Myers Squibb, stock ticker BMY. As we have seen in 2023, the big leader so far has been the technology sector, particularly big tech. Whereas defense sectors, especially healthcare, has lagged, even though they were the leaders, some of the leaders in 2022. So it's been a flipped script here in 2023. Bristol Myers has been stuck in a rut with shares down 12% over the past year. And just a month ago, the CEO Giovanni Caforio made a surprise announcement that he was stepping down as the CEO. It was a surprise because for starters, he's only 58 years old and company revenues have tripled under his leadership. The chief commercialization officer, Chris Borner, will take the top job, which is the same path Mr. Caforio took before being named the CEO in 2015. Bristol Myers is a major player in the pharmaceutical space, especially since they took on Celgene by way of a $74 billion acquisition in 2019. However, the company has a huge patent cliff to deal with this decade with three of their top selling drugs losing patent protection over the next few years. Bristol Myers has a great portfolio of products, a very diversified portfolio and a very strong pipeline, one of the strongest pharmaceutical pipelines out there. But the key with investing in pharmaceutical companies is you must be very patient. Bristol Myers currently sports a market cap of $138 billion and now yields a dividend of 3.5%. I currently own 141 shares of BMY, which pay me annual dividend income of roughly $321. Analysts are expecting EPS of $8.03 in 2023, which equates to an earnings multiple of just 8.2 times compared to their five-year average of 11.4 times, making a great value at current levels. Moving on to my fourth largest individual position within my dividend portfolio, that is none other than Microsoft Corporation, stock ticker MSFT. As I mentioned when discussing Bristol Myers, the tech sector, particularly big tech, has been a major leader here in 2023. Microsoft is one of those big tech leaders with a stock up 22% over the past 12 months and up 40% just in 2023 alone, which is amazing. Microsoft, one of the largest companies in the US, has a market cap of $2.5 trillion. AI has been the hot topic and Microsoft is one of the leaders in the space, having a 49% ownership stake in OpenAI, which owns ChatGPT. Microsoft has a very diversified product portfolio and I've gone through this stock in detail in many other videos, so I'm not gonna regurgitate that again, but I believe Microsoft is one of those must own stocks for the next decade plus. If you own Microsoft, chances are you're not owning it for the dividend because the stock only yields 0.8%, but it is not due to the fact that the company hasn't been increasing their dividend because they certainly have. In fact, over the past decade, the quarterly dividend has increased by nearly 200%, from 23 cents per share to now paying 68 cents per share on a quarterly basis. The company has increased the dividend for 18 consecutive years and they have a five year dividend growth rate of 10%. So they are certainly increasing the dividend, but really when a stock is outperforming dividend hikes, you're gonna see naturally the dividend yield go down. And over the past decade, shares of Microsoft are up over 840%. 
In terms of valuation, unlike the stocks we have already looked at that have some intriguing valuations, some cheaper valuations, Microsoft stock, quite frankly, is not cheap at all. Over the past five years, Microsoft has traded at an average earnings multiple of 30 times and 23 times over the past decade. Right now, shares of Microsoft trade at 30.4 times. So given my current position, I am not looking to add at these levels. The next position within my portfolio is an S&P 500 ETF. But then moving forward to the next individual position, that is Visa, stock ticker V. Visa is one of the leading transactional and payment processing company within the financial sector. Visa has a market cap of $469 billion, and over the past 12 months, shares have climbed 6%, and they are up over 10% in 2023 alone. Visa is a strong long-term investment as they are not only a leader within their sector, they have strong margins and they're a major player not just here in the US, but globally. Visa can be a very cyclical business because it's really predicated on people swiping their credit cards. However, if we dip into a recession, which many believe we're gonna dip into at least to a mild recession, that could be some headwinds for the company. Visa, like Microsoft, is yet another company that people don't invest in all that much based solely on the dividend alone. Visa pays a low dividend yield of roughly 8%, so pretty much in line with Microsoft, but where they differ from Microsoft and what a lot of dividend investors really like about Visa is their strong dividend growth. Visa has a five-year dividend growth rate of 17%, and they have increased that dividend for 14 consecutive years and counting. Over that past decade, the quarterly dividend for Visa has increased from eight cents per share to 45 cents per share, which is an increase of more than 450%. Visa shares over that past decade are up 410%. So investors have gotten a good combination of stock price appreciation and dividend growth, which can be a great and dynamic combination. Analysts are calling for 2023 EPS of $8.64 per share in 2023, which equates to an earnings multiple of 26.5 times. Over the past five years, shares have traded at an average of 34 times, and over the past decade, closer to 29 times. So again, another high multiple stock, but a company with plenty of growth as well. So there's a look at my top five individual positions. You have Johnson & Johnson, Lockheed Martin, Bristol Myers Squibb, Microsoft, and then rounding out the top five in terms of individual positions is Visa. With Johnson & Johnson and Bristol Myers, you're checking off the healthcare box. Lockheed Martin checks off for the defense sector and with a lot of unrest overseas, that's gonna play well into their hands moving forward. And then you have Microsoft, which is just a big tech and that checks off that AI box. Rounding out the top five is Visa, which checks off that financial sector. So again, this is just my top five individual positions. And in totality, I have 42 total positions within my dividend portfolio. If you are interested in seeing my entire dividend portfolio, and also in addition to that, getting two stock deep dives per month, and also seeing the valuation dashboard, which kind of shows the stocks that I follow and their valuation based on a discounted cash flow analysis, then consider subscribing to my premium newsletter, The Dividend Investor's Edge. You can check out the link down at the bottom of the screen and also down in the description below. In the comments section, let me know what you think of my top five individual stocks. And also, I wanna hear what your top five individual stocks are as well. Thanks again for watching, and if you haven't done so, click that like button, and we'll see you in the next video. Take care.